Star players attempt to cross this bridge and win a prize package worth over $5,000. Watch now as they brave the dangers to win a fortune on pitfall. Linda, you're standing on a pitfall. Watch out, Janet, that's another pitfall. And now here's the man to guide you through all the pitfalls, Alex Quebec. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Good to have you joining us once again for Pitfall. Well, as you know, I have the question. These people in the audience are going to come up with some of the answers. And then we hope our players will come up with a great deal of intuition because they have to figure out how the audience votes. Let's meet the players up close. First, let's meet our challenger, Alex. She's in charge of audience development with a local little theater group, so should do well if she can read our Pitfall audience. She's Janet Carley. And on to our champion, young lady with two children and a very busy lifestyle, Linda Wendell. Hello, Linda. Hello. Our champ, nice to have you back. Did your husband give you any good words of advice for this show? A little. Yeah, what did he say? Encouraging words or was he putting you down again? more encouraging this time. He was surprised that I had so much brains. I guess a lot more than he figured I had anyway. Oh, okay. Well, you're right, showing I him. Damn it. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Good to Thank have you. you here. You know what we expect of you. You've got to figure out this audience. Every time I ask some questions, they vote. If you can come up with a top answer, then you'll earn a point. You'll pick up pit passes along the way. Play a five-point game or five minutes, whichever happens first. And the winner goes on to play for a big prize. You ready? Yeah. Okay. For the audience, then. Here you go, folks. Do you participate in sports for fun, for exercise, for competition, or for number four, for socializing? Vote on that one, please, right now. Put all the answers locked into our computer. And Linda, as the champion, you know, you get to give me an answer first. Size up this audience. Let's see if you can figure them out. Do they participate in sports for fun, exercise, competition, or socializing? Um, I like to do it for fun. You do like to. You like to do it for fun. All right, Janet, what do you think the audience likes to do it for? Oh, I think they all should do it for exercise. So, number two. Okay, we've got fun and exercise represented. I like socializing myself. Let's see what the audience preferred. They said fun. Now. That means Linda wins a point, gets her first hit pass of the match. Most women would say the sexiest thing about a man is a great smile, body, line, or voice. Vote on that. <laughs> Sexiest thing about a man. One of those four, Janet. You tell me which one and why. Oh. What, what really grabbed you about it? He grabbed me with his voice first and then the body. Yeah. <laughs> the body would be in there right yeah. after the voice. Yeah. Linda? I like a man's smile. You like a smile and she likes the voice. What did the audience like? They think the sexiest thing is his body, sure. Great body. Hey, it works for women. Why not for men? In some marriage ceremonies, they still say love, honor, and obey. Now, we're dealing particularly with the obey part in the marriage ceremony. Is that traditional? Is that insulting? Is it unnecessary in this day and age? Or is it still charming? Vote on this, folks. We've got a good group of married people up there, I see. So we'll have personal experiences to call upon. Linda, you tell me. Obey that part of the marriage ceremony. Which one is it? I'd say it's traditional. Did you say obey when you got married? Yep. You did. All right. Did your husband say obey? Mm, he did, but he's not sticking to it. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's another ceremony. It's called D-I-D-O-R-C-E. <laughs> Janet? You tell me, what do the audience have to say? Insulting, unnecessary, or charming? The obey part of the marriage ceremony. Well, I think it's, I think that they would say it's unnecessary. Okay. Let's see if they did in fact say it's unnecessary. What did the audience have to say on this subject? They said it's traditional. That means that Linda gets her second point. Both of you, I assume, drive a car. And I'm sure most of the people in the audience drive a car, so this question uh, will make sense to you. Which traffic sign best describes how men think of women? Is it soft shoulders, go slow, stop, or road close? Vote on that one quickly, please. A couple of the guys made a faces there as they were answering that question. Janet, you tell me. Look them over. Check this group. This is a strange-looking audience here. 
You don't know what they're going to vote on this Definitely one. soft shoulders. Soft shoulders, you think so? Yeah. All right, we got a few rounds of applause there. Linda? I'll go with road clothes. Road clothes. Hmm. Negative point of view, but let's find out what the audience had to say. They applauded soft shoulders, and that's why. Uh, that's the way they voted. If housewives were paid for keeping house, how much would they receive, or how much should they receive each week? $100, $200, $300, or much, much more. Boy, look at the women get to the switches on that one real fast. They're all going for the much more. You want to bet? Okay, the votes are in, and now, Linda, you tell me. I'll go with much more. Much more. You're going to go with the women figuring they outnumber the men. I'm not sure they do in that audience. Janet. Oh... Keeping house, housewives, what are you going to pay them? $200. $200. You think that's what they're worth. What do the audience think they were worth? Much more. A lot of generous men out there as well. Linda gets another point. When a man reaches 30, his sex drive does one of these things. Stays the same, it increases, it decreases, or it just fades away. All right, vote on that. Thank you very much. Janet, you tell me. Man is 30. I've heard that men what do you mean decrease you've heard? after 18. But... A man what? A man does what after 18? Decreases after 18. So... But there's a lot of men out there. Give me an answer. I, I would say that they would say increase. There's more okay. men. Okay, that sound meant that we're out of time, so this is the final response we get. Linda. I'll say... I'll say... Stays the same. Mainly because I want to hear the answer to this question. She says increases, and she says stays the same. What did the audience say? They said stays the same, and that means, Linda, you get another point, and you remain our champion. Congratulations. Come on over here. Come over here. You're going to go for a ride with me. Janet, thank you for joining us on Pitfall. It was fun. I hope for you. We've got some prizes backstage. We're taking a ride together, sweetheart. Come back, and we'll play the Pitfall round, all right? Stay with us, folks. One commercial break. That's all. Special watching her today that he hopes is going to be bringing her good luck. And who's that? That's my Auntie Clara. She's a very special person. She's 85 years old. And I just want to say hi, Auntie Clara. Okay. And hopefully, Auntie Clara, Linda's going to make it all the way across and win a big prize. You know what we're going to do right now, though. We're going to have our own private light show. You picked up two pit passes in the match, so you'll be able to select those in a moment. There are three pitfalls, three booby trap sections. They're going to light up twice. The safe sections will light up once. Turn around, pay close attention, we'll dim the lights, and here we go. All right, you earned two pit passes, you select those right now. I'll go six and seven. Six and seven, take those two, and you and I will go upstairs and go to work. Come on. stand here for a moment. I want to explain a few things for the audience. Every time she gives me a correct answer, she's going to be allowed to move forward and earn $100. And it's not as easy as it looks from out there, folks. You know the answers, of course, but our contestants are standing up here. It's an unfamiliar situation for them. It's a little dangerous when they look down, you know, if you've got the fear of heights and they're nervous, so they miss a lot of questions. But they've got 100 seconds to make it from that end to this end. And sometimes that's enough time, because if they make it successfully, they wind up with a fabulous prize, like this one. You and a friend will be on your way to jolly old England, Linda. Your prize includes round-trip airfare to London, three weeks double accommodation, and a compact rental car for your holiday enjoyment, bringing the value of this vacation package to $5,020. All right, you can do it. Now, the last time you were up here, you picked up 200. You didn't get very far. Going to do better than that today, right? Here we go. First question, 100 seconds on the clock. In what comic strip would we find olive oil? Popeye. Popeye is the right answer. You can move forward. You're on number one, and you've got $100. How many packs of cigarettes come in a carton? Twelve. No, ten. You're rowing a boat. What do you call the things you stick the oars through? Ah. The oarlock. Dogs have pups. 
What do kangaroos have? Kangos. No, nope, they call them Joey. Most Americans hate using the new dollar coin. Whose picture's on it? Pass. Lady named Susan B. Anthony. Name a fruit with the seeds on the outside. Avocado. No, nope. strawberry. What kind of a sports team is known as a nine? Football? No, nope. baseball. What American president was known as the great rail splitter? Abraham Lincoln. That's absolutely right. You move forward once again, and you now have $200. Move a little forward. Who played the boy in the movie Shane? What was the actor's name? Oh, pass. Brandon DeWilga. What city is known as the biggest little city in the world? Reno. Reno is the right answer. And you can move forward again to number three. And you're safe there. You're $300. They used to be called the Sandwich Islands. What do we call them now? Pass. On the Hawaiian Islands. What was the name of the first racehorse ever to win a million dollars? Before your time. Pass. Citation. What's the first sign of the zodiac? Oh, Aquarius? No, it's Aries. When properly dressed, where does a Scotsman keep his dirt? Around his waist? No, it's in his stocking. It's a little dagger. You're a cowboy bulldogging the steer. You throw him down. What do you do with him then? Jump on him. Oh, you know you... <laughs> no, you tie his leg. <laughs> and you're out of time. <laughs> Tough luck, but you wound up with $300. You went one section better than last time. That's nice, Sean. All right, Linda. We're going to take a break right now, folks. We'll introduce a new challenger for Linda right after this. And while we're going away, here come the pitfalls again. Let's see if she made the right choice. Number four, number six, and number seven. She was right. I'm going to show you. Bird builds his nest. Linda Wonderly, our champion, is building bit by bit. She got $300 that time in the pitfall round. Now has a total of $500 and gets to defend her crown against this challenger. Here comes the challenger who hopes there's a lot of mothers in the audience. He says that mothers just love him to pieces. He's a law student who cut classes to be here today. His name is Bob Halifax. Hi, Bob. Hi there. Welcome aboard. Thank you. We hope there's a lot of mothers out there, huh? You know, that sort of means that the girls don't love me, but the mothers do. <laughs> mothers do. All right. Well, I want to wish you lots of luck. Okay. Take a good look at our audience while I ask them the first question of the match. What would a man who has spent a week in the woods like most when he gets home? A steak, a shower, sleep, or romance? Vote on that. I myself would like all four, but not in that order. Okay, Linda, how do you think this audience voted on that? Would they want a steak, a shower, sleep, or romance? I think after being in force for a long time, they, they could probably... Oh, I better say number one. Steak, you figure that's yes. what they'd want? Okay. Well, it's a one guy who has been out in the woods a long time. He's applauding. Bob, how do you read this crowd? Well, I think whenever, uh... They don't look as if they could spend a week in the woods and come out of it alive, to tell you the truth, but... Um, give me a reading. I'd love to say four, but I think probably what most guys do when they get back is they want to go straight to bed and have sleep. They go to bed dirty? Don't you think they want to shower first? Let's see what the audience said. They said, sleep, you're absolutely right. You got the right answer. And now we go to a question that should be of great importance to everybody out here because I see many of you are of the proper age to be on your own and working. And I want to know what makes your job important to you. It's got to be one of these four things. Accomplishment, days off, money, or success. Vote on that. What makes the job important? to you. Bob, you're still at school, so you don't have any personal experience with this, but you're, uh, all you have to do right now is size up the audience, figure out what's important to them. Okay, well, I took a year out in before, like, my DA in law, and I sure didn't get the money while I was working, but I think the most important thing to most of the people I was working with was the success in it. Success factor. All right, then you'll press number four for it. Linda, he has left you with accomplishment, days off, and money. Talked about money, but he shied away from it. What do you win? Okay, you've got number one, he's got number four, and let's see what the audience has on this. They Success! All right, and Bob has come up once again by assessing them correctly. In the comic strip, Batman and Robin were known as the dynamic duo. A woman dynamic duo. What would that be? Her eyes, her lips, her hands, or... Others. Wipe that grin off your face, Failure. 
right, hold on there. Linda, what's the dynamic duo for a woman? I'll say the eyes. The eyes. I think I might agree with you. Bob, what do you think? Well, when they ask a similar question of the girls, the girls didn't stick to the eyes, so I'm going to say others. <laughs> yeah, you remember the girls went to the body. Yeah, I remember that question, too. The girls voted for the man's body, right? Let's see how the audience voted on this one. They went for others. <laughs> Looks like they went for the body also, Bob. Remember we had a question some time ago about women when they're at their most aggressive? Let's turn it around right now. Tip for chat. Men are at their most aggressive but when driving when they're at work when they're drinking or when they're playing men most aggressive vote on that pick one two three or four and i'm going to pick bob to give me an answer most aggressive when they're fooling around and playing playing linda i'll say at work at work i don't know i've seen a lot of wild drivers but let's find out the audience says, at work. That means, Linda, you're right. Question with regard to your honesty, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to sell a car. You know it's going to need transmission work very soon. The buyer is a stranger from out of town. You get the situation? All right. Would you tell him about it? Would you fix it? Would you cut the price? Or would you say nothing? Be honest now. Nobody said no. All right. They have voted. Linda, you tell me how they voted. Um, would you be able to repeat the question? Sure, you're going to sell your car. It's going to need transmission work. The buyer is a stranger from out of town. Which one of these four things are you going to do before selling that car? Are you going to tell them about it, fix it, cut the price, or say nothing? I think the audience would go with say nothing. Say nothing. <laughs> All right, Bob. You know what, student? I can't do anything but say I'd tell them. <laughs> you would tell them. I think on this one, I'm going to go along with Linda. I've checked this audience over pretty carefully. They look like a larcenous bunch to me. Let's find out. Yeah, say nothing. You bet. All right, that's another point. Oh, Linda, you've got a point, but unfortunately, it's not enough because Bob has three, and he becomes our new champion. So come on over here, Bob. Congratulations, Linda. You played it very well. Linda, goodbye. Thank you for joining us on Pitfall. We're going to take a ride, Bob and I, when we come back. Pitfall round. See if he can win the big prize. <laughs> They named a city in Canada after our new champion, Bob Halifax. The city, of course, is Bob in the province of Quebec. <laughs> now, that doesn't make sense at all. Bob, in a few moments, you're going to be up there on that bridge trying to make it in safety from one end to the other in order to win a big prize. During the match, you picked up two pit passes. They'll come in very handy. Right now, something else that will come in handy. We are going to show you where the pitfalls are. We light those <laughs> sections up twice. Those sections light up once. You ready for this? All right, let's see how attentive you are, how you can pay close attention. Hmm, I think I've got them, but I'm not sure. You're entitled to select two passes. Pick them now. Two. Number two. And six. Two and six. All right, if you're lucky enough to make it all the way with those tip passes and answering the questions correctly, you're going to be a happy young man because this is the prize you get. For your home, you'll receive a quality dining room suite with table, four chairs, china hut, and sideboard in beautifully crafted oak. And for your floors, 30 yards of luxurious deep pile carpeting. Bob, for your kitchen, a large capacity three-door refrigerator freezer, making the value of your prize $5,015. Five oh one five. That's the value of your prizes. All right, I'll ask you to step back just a bit there. You got your pit passes in the right order. You didn't have them in the right order. No. See? You might have gotten <laughs> yourself into trouble. One hundred seconds on the clock. You ready? Sure. <laughs> okay. Good luck. How many humps on an Arabian camel? Two. No one. You went hunting. You shot a brace of quail. How many? Twenty-seven. <laughs> Two. <laughs> what do you call the very bottom of a ship? The hull. No, the keel. Pierre is the capital of what state? Montana, South Dakota. What do you call a pig that's being fattened for meat? Bacon. <laughs> no, a porker. You got in too late. In what country was the ballet invented? England. No, Italy. In the game of backgammon, how many pieces does each player have at the beginning? 17. 
this scene. Close. What common item has a chanter, a drone, and finger holes? <laughs> Sorry. It's a bagpipe, laddie. Oh. It's something piscatorial. It has to do with what? <laughs> Fish. When Barbara Eden starred in I Dream of Jeannie, there was one part of her body that could never be shown on camera. What was it? Her belly button. Her belly button. You got it right in. Uh. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's move on to one and face it. The doctor just checked your patella. What did he check? My throat. No, your kneecap. Oh. <laughs> How many wings does the Pentagon have? Five. Five is right. <laughs> yes, indeed. You give me a pit back, you move across number two in safety to number three. Who composed the famous Rhapsody in Blue? Chopin. No, George Gershwin. <laughs> Which organ in your body is the most sensitive to touch? The tongue. <laughs> the tongue. That's the right answer. You're going to move to number four, and you're safe there. How many pockets in a pool table? Mm -hmm. Six. Six is right. You can move to number five. <laughs> and that is safe for five hundred dollars. What's the name of Mickey Mouse's dog? Pluto. Pluto's the right answer. You give me a fast quick step across. Quick. Seven hundred dollars. <laughs> Who painted the famous blue boy work? <laughs> <laughs> That's number seven. <laughs> and that means you got seven hundred dollars. Congratulations <laughs> to you. Nice showing. <laughs> now where did you think you had two and six? And obviously those were correct. And the last pitfall would have been number eight, I assume. Let's find out if I'm correct as we wave goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Two, six, and it would have been oh. seven. He got there safely, though. So long, everybody. Safely, <laughs> guys. Pitfall guest accommodation is provided by the Inn of Denman Place in Vancouver. The Inn of Denman Place in the class by itself. Quiet, elegant, careful service, and the experience of a unique hotel. The Inn of Denman Place near English Bay and Stanley Park. Every spin is a chance to win. Contestants take a whirl at the wheel of fortune. It could mean bankruptcy or cash, prices, and trips. Join Pat Sajak and lovely Santa White for game show fun. Global's got the wheel of fortune. Tonight at 7.